Hey Tina, are you at home? I just want to let you know that I'm going golfing this weekend, so make sure that you polish my clubs before then, okay? Wait, you want me to polish your clubs again? I thought you did that after you got back from golfing last week. That wasn't me polishing them. I was just cleaning the dirt off them because I used them that day. I was really tired and I wasn't able to do everything like I normally do. So can you please make sure to polish them before I go golfing this weekend? Well, I guess I can, but golfing is your thing, isn't it? I just think that this should be something that you do. Well, look. It's not like I like going golfing because I like it all that much or anything, but my boss invited me out of the green this weekend, so I couldn't say no. I guess that makes sense. But even so, I never even touch your clubs, so I don't see why you can't do this. Look, you're my wife, and I'm coming to ask you for your help, okay? So can you please just help me out here? I mean, it's not like you ever leave the house anyways, right? So I think you should be able to at least do this for me. Eric, I'm not leaving the house as much as I used to because I'm pregnant right now. I am literally eight months pregnant and can hardly even move. Okay, well you don't really need to move while polishing golf clubs. You can do it all while sitting down. Not only that, but it's not like they're heavy either. They're really light, you'll see. So quit making excuses. This is why you've put on a lot of weight lately. I don't care if you are pregnant. It doesn't mean you can get out of doing your duties like this. I am not trying to get out of doing anything, thank you very much. Okay then, what do you call what you're doing right now? Even just recently said you weren't feeling good and ended up spending the whole day in bed. You didn't even cook for me then. Well, how is that any of my fault? I am literally pregnant with a tiny human inside of me. It is growing and getting heavier and more restless, and that takes a physical toll on my body. I literally felt like puking that entire day. I get what you're saying, but the fact is that pregnancy isn't a disease or sickness, and women like you shouldn't be using it as an excuse to get out of doing their basic duties to their husband. I know it's not a sickness, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't have symptoms. You do realize that overexertion while pregnant can have serious consequences for when you give birth, right? Oh boy, here we go again. I forgot that the whole world has to stop just because one lady is pregnant. You must really think that the earth revolves around you, huh? I have literally never said that I don't expect people to do everything for me because I'm pregnant. Well, you're literally trying to get out of doing something now because you are. I mean, the second you got pregnant, you quit your job. Are you really telling me that there aren't women at your office who were working while they were pregnant? Because I think that you just didn't want to work. I quit my job because I could tell that it was having a negative effect on my health after I got pregnant. It was causing me a lot of stress and even the doctor said that my blood pressure was getting too high. Well then eat some cereal and lower your cholesterol or something like that. If your blood pressure is too, it's precisely because you're not moving enough. I mean, when was the last time that you went for a run or worked out at all? Probably months ago because I am literally eight months pregnant. What, what don't you get about this? I am doing exactly what the doctors have told me to do. I am moving when I'm able to, but I'm not overexerting myself. I'm just saying that I've never heard of other pregnant women asking this way. I don't remember my mom ever acting this way when she was pregnant with my little sister. Besides, when you finally do have your baby, you're going to be relaxing in the hospital and then at home, so the least you can do is work a little now. Okay, fine. You see you're not going to listen to me at all. I am listening, but just make sure that those poles are shining by the time I get back, okay? Okay. I'll make sure that you can see your face in them. Don't worry about that. And try to smile a little more around the house. After all, you do realize you were only able to quit because I'm still working, right? Don't forget that I do a lot for this family, even if you hardly ever say thank you for it. You really ought to realize this already. Hey Tina, I just wanted to let you know that I'm going to be out late tonight. I have a thing at a bar that I have to go to. Oh, don't tell me that you're going out drinking with your boss again. 
I thought you said you were going to come home on time and help me put together our baby carriage. The box is huge, and I just don't think that I'm going to be able to do it all by myself. It's fine. You're not even pregnant yet. We've got plenty of time before we have to do anything like that. I'll just do it all by myself while you're in the hospital with the baby. How does that sound? But you told me that you didn't want to be bothered reading the instruction booklet and that you wanted to do it while we both were at home. Well, the doctor said that the baby should be coming sometime this week, right? So we've got plenty of time to do this. We can do it by this weekend. But I thought that you said you were going to be gone all weekend because you had to golf. Okay, I'm not going golfing for four, eight hours straight. We can do it when I get back home. But you're always so tired after you get back from golfing. You always just eat dinner and go straight to bed. Tina, please. It's just a baby carriage. How hard can it be? I don't really know what your deal is, but you've really been getting under my skin lately. Well, if I am, it's probably because you're doing the same. I feel like you never do anything for me. And just what is that supposed to mean, huh? I mean, even this morning I put out some boxes and trash for you to take out when you left for work, and they're just sitting outside our front door. You didn't throw them away at all. And I'm asking you to help me get ready for our baby, and you're putting golf first. I just think that you're not being very helpful or considerate of me right now. Well, do you know that I asked for the day off for when you're supposed to give birth? Right, but you realize that's not an exact date. It's just an estimation that doctors give you. It could be a few days before or even a few days later. I just really wish that you were a bit more thoughtful with this. I mean, you do realize that the baby I have inside of me is both of ours, right? I'm not asking you to go easy on me just because I'm pregnant. But I'm saying that I think you could be doing a little more. And I think that I'm doing more than enough for you. I mean, thanks to whom do you think it is you are able to spend all day lazy about the house? But that's just it! I'm not lazy! I'm doing my best to keep the house clean for you. I do plenty while you're gone. In fact, you haven't helped me with any of the cooking or cleaning or anything else that I normally do since I've gotten pregnant. And just why in the world should I help an unemployed woman like yourself with the housework, huh? I'm the one going out to work a real job every day. Do you really not think that's anything? Eric, are you still going to be acting this way even after I have this baby? You know that I want to raise it together with you. I need to make sure that we're on the same page about how much work this is going to be. You can agree with that at least, right? Oh, I understand. But you haven't given birth yet, have you? So why would anything change now if you haven't even had the kid? It's just that... I feel like you've really changed ever since I got pregnant. I haven't done anything at all. You're just being paranoid. It's probably your pregnant woman hormones. Honestly, you have no idea how nice you have it. Not having to worry about anything all day. Meanwhile, I'm slaving away at my desk from 9 to 5. Please don't talk to me that way, Eric. You have to know that you're not being fair to me. All I want to do is make sure that we have everything ready for our baby. I just want to be mentally and physically ready. And it's just that the way you're acting is starting to worry me a little. You're going to have the baby just fine. And then you and I are going to raise it. There aren't going to be any issues. So quit being such a worry wart. Honestly, you're the main source of all your problems at this point. That's what I'm talking about. It's when you say things like that that I get nervous. You really think that this is all in my head? All that tells me is that you're really not listening to me at all. For the hundred thousandth time, I hear you. But it sounds like you're getting upset. So why don't you just take a nap and cool off? Honestly, this is worse than when you're on your period. Eric, please, I am pregnant and have been for so long now. You are being completely dismissive of me. Well, of course I am. I'm not going to play into your paranoid delusions and feed them anymore. You're always complaining about how difficult things are and how bad the pregnancy makes you feel. But everyone gets pregnant. You're just being a big baby about this. You're going to give birth. And that's all there is to it. Okay, yes, I get it.
Thank you for making that so clear for me. Just make sure you polish my golf clubs, okay? You really should know better than to argue with me. Why can't you just be a good wife and listen to your husband, especially now that we're about to become parents? If you think that I'm going to be easy on you like this forever, you're going to be sorely mistaken. Eric, please. I need you to get home right now. I, I think my water just broke. Wait, what? Your water just broke? Are you sure that you just didn't pee yourself or something like that? Of course I'm sure that I didn't just pee myself. My water just broke. I know it. But it's not even the day that you're supposed to give birth. It's still too early. Please, Eric, you have to hurry. I think that I'm already starting to have contractions. Can you, can you please come home and drive me to the hospital? Oh, give me a freaking break. We were just about to get ready to start golfing here. If it's really that much of an emergency, then go and call a taxi or something. Eric, it's really difficult for me to even move right now. I, I need you to come home. I mean, I mean, how can you be getting ready for golfing already? Look, looking at the clock, I'd have thought that you literally just arrived. Well, I'm not about to waste my time driving all the way back just for you. Do you really think I can keep my boss waiting like that? And you better not be making a mess at home. I don't care if your water did break. Make sure you mop it up before you leave. Eric, can you please pick up the phone? I'm serious. I really need to talk to you right now. Man, you're annoying. Do you know that? What is it? What do you want? Don't you know that I'm out golfing right now? Just how many times are you going to try and interrupt me like this? I told you to leave me alone when I'm on the green. You mean that you really care more about golf than your own wife? Fine then. If that's the way that you're going to be, then I never want to ever see you again. I'm never going to forgive you for this. I just have no idea where I went wrong raising you. Honestly, as your parents, it's just embarrassing how you're acting. My parents? What in the world are you even talking about right now? You really have gone crazy. You really want to call your own mother crazy, Eric. The only reason I'm texting you from her phone is because my own ran out of battery. Wait, hold on a second. Is this really... Is that you, Mom? Of course it is. Who else did you think it was? Now are you going to explain to me just what is going on here? How could you just leave your wife like that after her water broke? You really care more about golf than her? What is the matter with you, Eric? But I didn't think that it her water had broken. Are you telling me that's really what happened? Of course that's what happened. You put Tina in real danger by doing what you did. But I thought that Tina was just messing with me. I really did think that she was lying. Why in the world would your own pregnant wife lie to you about her water breaking? Well, it's just that lately, Tina has been acting really strange lately. I just thought she was being really hormonal. I mean, she was always bugging me about how I would never do enough around the house. So I thought that she was trying to get me to come back home so that she could make me clean up the house or something. You should know that I've seen the conversations that you've been having with Tina. And the only crazy person between the two of you is you, Eric. Honestly, what are you thinking treating your own wife like this? You were saying this is my fault? No way. Mom, if anything, I've been way too easy on Tina this whole time. I mean, she's the one always trying to get off doing her chores by using her pregnancy. Did you know she even quit her job because of it? And just what is wrong with any of that? She is your wife, and she is pregnant, and you should be going above and beyond for her right now. Why aren't you doing more for her? Her water literally broke, and you didn't even want to be there for her. How would you like it if a tiny human started growing in your stomach, huh? I doubt that you'd like having to carry it around for nine months. But I'm a man. Why would I ever both thinking about what that would be like? 
That's exactly the problem. You should be thinking about how your wife feels because she's the one going through this. Where is your empathy? Did I really do such a bad job raising you that you can't even understand that? Mom, I'm really sorry. I really didn't think I was doing anything wrong at all. Well, I'm not surprised at that. After all, if you're so dull as to not even be able to empathize with your wife... Well, it's no wonder Tina is in the state that she's in. Do you really think that pregnancy isn't hard? You think that it's something women use as an excuse to get out of doing chores or something? You're a disgusting pig. Okay, I'm sorry, jeez. I'll head to the hospital right now. Just tell me which one Tina's at. You think that I'm going to just tell you where you can find her? Why don't you just go back to enjoying your game of golf? No, I want to be here for Tina. Just tell me where my wife is right now. Tina just told me that she doesn't want you here because it's only going to make her feel worse. So don't bother. You clearly wanted to golf more than be there for your wife anyways. Besides, both of her parents are here as well. We don't need you. Eric, if you have some time, I'd like to talk to you in person this Saturday. Oh, Tina, it was so nice to hear from you. I was getting really, really worried when you weren't returning my messages. I must have called you a hundred times. How is our baby? Did you give birth okay? Are you okay? Tell me everything. Well, I'm assuming that you heard from your mom that I had a daughter and I named her Hope. We have a daughter named Hope? That's incredible. I'm so happy. But I wish you would have talked to me. More about the name choice, at least. But anyways, when I can finally meet our little girl, I can't believe that you kept her this long from me. That's pretty mean, don't you think? Did you seriously just say that? You were the one who abandoned me at home after I told you my water broke, and also that you could go and play golf. You want to talk about mean? You're positively atrocious! Tina, please calm down. You don't understand. I really did think that the baby was going to come on the day that the doctor said it would. Even my boss was saying that the first birth usually comes a bit late. And I told you that the date was just an estimate and that it could come before or after, didn't I? Are you really telling me that you took pregnancy advice from your boss but ignored what your own wife was telling you? Well, I just, I mean, I'm really happy that you were able to have the baby safely. Eric, I can't do this anymore. I want a divorce. Do you understand? No, I don't understand. You can't be serious, right? We just had our child, and how could you be saying this? Exactly. I didn't want to say this to you while I was pregnant, but after what you did to me, I just can't in good consciousness ever let you near me or this baby again. I am going to raise her on my own. We don't need you. Wait, no, you can't do this. She's my daughter too. You know? I know that. But you've done nothing to show any interest in raising her at all. Not the entire time that I was pregnant and asking for help. Not when I was giving birth. Only now that I'm telling you I want to separate. Honestly, even if we did stay together, I'd probably end up raising her by myself anyways. So what's the point of being with a man who doesn't make me happy? But think of our baby. Think of Hope. Do you really want her to grow up without both of her parents around? That can't be good for her. And just what part of parenting do you want to do? I mean, I'd feed her, give her a bottle, change her diapers. That's all you think the parenting is, Eric? Of course not. I'd rather her. I'd do anything for her. You would just have to teach me how to do this first. You realize that I can't even really take care of a house right now, right? That means I can't clean, I can't cook, I can't polish stupid golf clubs. Are you going to do all of that for me while I'm recovering? All of that? Come on, Tina. You know that I have work to do. I thought that you'd say that. I know that in your eyes, the only thing you see is an unemployed burden you have to take care of. No, it's not like that at all. I'm just... I'm sorry. That's not what I meant. 
Except you probably think that even after we had this baby that I would still be doing everything around the house, didn't you? Even when I was pregnant, you couldn't be bothered to spare a hand and help me when I asked. So why would I think that any of that would change now? You don't have what it takes to be a father. I've seen it in your eyes. But taking care of a good and doing work around the house are two distinctly different things. You aren't going to judge one through the other, are you? It's not about that. It's about being able to be there for each other when we need it. Do you really think that I'm going to be able to do everything around the house and everything for the child? I am already tired enough as it is, but I know that I can't count on you for help. Okay, okay, I get it. I'll help you clean up around the house and stuff from now on. Can you please just come home? I did a lot of reading online and finally realized what a pain it is to be pregnant for a woman. I understand now, so that means we basically went through the same thing and I'll never abandon again. You really just don't get it! I knew this was the right call. I want a divorce and that's final. Nothing you say is going to change my mind. Please, Tina, just be reasonable. You're acting way too rashly right now. Can't we just talk this out? I am very calm and we are going to talk this out, but we're only going to be discussing the terms of our divorce. But I read online how emotional women can get after giving birth. Are you sure that you're not just thinking like this because of all the hormones? Eric, I don't care about what you read from some blog written by someone who knows nothing about being pregnant. Just like I don't care about what your boss's opinions on pregnant women are either. I am telling you what I need and you are not listening. I'm sorry. I am really trying to learn. You have to know that I realized the mistakes I made. I promise that I'll fix all of this. That's the thing, though. You're the problem. And the only way that I'm interested in fixing it is by getting rid of you. I don't want to stay together. I don't want you in my life. The only thing that I want is to be rid of you. Please, you can't do this to me. I was looking forward to being a dad. I really was. You should have thought about that before you left me at home alone. Water broken and chose to play golf with your boss instead. You had so many chances to step up and prove that you weren't serious about this. And you never did. Well, I'm through giving out second chances. We're through. Now goodbye, Eric. After that, the divorce proceedings began and lasted three months as we argued about the terms of it. In the end, my lawyer was able to convince the judge that Eric more or less relinquished his rights as a father through his horrible behavior. That I had Eric's own parents there to show their disgust towards how he treated me was very helpful. Eric begged for forgiveness and tried to talk about how much he had changed, but I had made up my mind. For endangering myself and our baby, I was able to get full custody of Hope and Eric was ordered to pay child support until she turned 18. I heard that after that, the details of Eric's divorce were leaked to his company and the rumor mill went to work. Before long, Eric quit his job because of all the glares he was getting and whispering that he was hearing. As for me, I took Hope and moved back in with my parents for the time being. They were more than happy to have me move in and get closer to their daughter and granddaughter. I still also see Eric's parents who care deeply for Hope. I had stopped asking for news about Eric and at this point went nothing more than to move on. Sandra, pick up if you see this. What the hell is going on? What is that thing on my front lawn? I need you to explain it to me right this second. Are you hearing me? Oh, hello, Beth. Calm down. Are you talking about that bus stop for the kindergarten kids? What else would I be talking about? I got up this morning, looked out, and I was floored. I called the kindergarten right away, and they told me it was all you're doing. She said the application form had my husband's name on it, and that you had submitted the form to the kindergarten office. Is that true? This is the first I'm hearing of this. What the hell is going on? I don't see a problem here. Just look out the window. What you see right there is what's going on. Your front yard has been turned into a kindergarten bus stop. What's so hard to understand? That's the problem. Why our front yard? That's what I want to know. 
We just moved into this neighborhood, built a brand new house down the street from yours. But when I made some inquiries about the kindergarten, I learned that the kindergarten bus stop was way down on the other end of the street. I called the kindergarten and asked the principal to build another bus stop on this corner too. And it just turned out that your front lawn was the ideal location for a bus stop. Excuse me? Are you serious? I mean, you have a big lawn. What's a little extra space for the school bus? I don't see why you're all worked up over it. There's also a lot of space for the kids to play while they wait for the bus. We never gave anybody permission to use our property. Sandra, I know you forged that application form that you submitted to the kindergarten. That's a crime! My husband is positive that he did not sign a document. And why would he? Besides, if we check the actual form, we'll all see that it's a forgery. If necessary, we'll have a professional check that signature and verify that it's a forgery. Are you okay with that? Stop right there, Beth. Don't you want to continue living in this neighborhood? Pardon me? You do know who my uncle is, don't you? I'm telling you right now, you don't want me as an enemy. I suggest you and your husband do a little background check on me before accusing me of a crime. Hey, Beth, what's up? Claire, is that you? It's been a while. How are you? I'm doing great. You have a little time to talk? Yeah, no, what's up? I'm currently back home with my husband and kids. I drove by your house yesterday and saw that part of your front yard was barricaded off. Looks like a bus stop. What's up with that? Yeah, about that. Your house has a pretty wide lawn. No fences or obstructions up to the front door. Seems kind of a waste, that nice, spacious lawn. And what happened to that beautiful flower bed along the sidewalk? Did you give them permission to do that? I mean, it's private property, right? Also, drove by this morning and saw that there were additional work going on. You good with this? That lawn, too. Oh, it was all so beautiful before. Now it's a mess. All that dirt and gravel piled up. Sight for sore eyes. What's going on, Beth? Yeah, it's a problem. About three days ago, a neighbor just went ahead and decided to build a kindergarten bus stop in front of our house, on our property. Wait, what? Seriously? Yeah, I woke up the other day and looked out the window, and there was a bus stop there. Of course, I complained to the kindergarten, but there's this mom that lives nearby. Her son goes to the same kindergarten as my daughter used to go. Apparently, she's the leader of all the moms in the area. Ah, uh, the big boss, huh? Yeah, right, the boss mom. This woman, Sandra, she recently built a house down the street and the whole family just moved in. Apparently, she just took it on herself to build a bus stop closer to her home so that her kid wouldn't have to walk all the way to the end of the street. So she went ahead and forged my husband's signature on an application form and submitted that to the kindergarten. Seriously? What did the kindergarten do after you complained? Yeah, I was getting to that. Apparently, the principal of the school, he's this boss mom's uncle, so anything I say just won't pass. So I came home empty-handed, and there's nothing I can do, apparently. I see. So the kindergarten's a family-owned business. Oh, that's a problem. As you saw this morning, the place is barricaded off. Construction is continuing. How do I stop this? Sandra and the other moms gather outside and jabber early in the morning, and the kids play around my front lawn, making a mess of the flower bed. That's why the place is a wreck. They even removed that white picket fence that runs along the side of the house. Yesterday, there was all kinds of trash piled up, like snack packs and plastic bottles. That's pretty bad. But wasn't your daughter in first grade? She's not going to that kindergarten anymore, right? 
I mean, I could understand if she was still going there. Anyway, forging an application? That's not right. Actually, it's a crime, right? Yeah, that's what I said. But the kindergarten just won't do a thing. They say it's my husband's signature, and that's that, apparently. Ugh, this is super frustrating. I think I have an ulcer from all this. Where is the kindergarten? The Sunshine Kindergarten. Oh, that place. Down near Grove Park? I know it well. So the Sandra is related to the principal there, huh? Do you know this principal? Not me, but my father is friends with him. They are golf buddies, apparently. Seriously? I didn't realize you knew anybody at that kindergarten. Could you let me handle this for now? I'll talk to my dad tonight. Maybe we can work something out. Really? Wow, that would be great. Come on, Beth. We've known each other since grade school. We girls have to stick together. I can't thank you enough. Oh, by the way, I was going to ask you for some advice concerning a different matter. Can we talk about that a little later? Um, no problem. If you have time, why don't you come over to my place right now? Right now? Yeah, why not? My dad's here too, and my husband says come on over and even stay for dinner if you like. The Thanksgiving weekend is coming up and the kindergarten will be closed. So why don't we just put our heads together and get this mess all cleaned up once and for all? Yeah, that sounds good. I'll be right over. Hey, what the hell is this? How are we supposed to park the bus here when it's like this? Oh, good morning, Sandra. So, you see you already saw the bus stop area. We decided to fence off our area, the front lawn and all. You did all this during the holiday weekend? Yeah, well, we were thinking of putting up a fence since moving in, but... Just didn't get around to it. But thanks to you, we finally got it done. We even included security measures like cameras. I can't believe it. That's just terrible. Uh, terrible? You mean we put up a fence around our property? Of course that's what I mean. Where is the bus supposed to stop now? There isn't enough space. We can't very well put the bus stop right on the sidewalk. I can't believe you went ahead and ruined our little meeting spot. Our meeting spot? Yeah, using our lawn as your little personal park while the kids play and mess up our yard, you people blabber on and on about you, your husbands, or gossip about your neighbors, I'm sure I've come up countless times. If you're going to use the word terrible, I think I have a right to use that word more than you. Ah, uh, Beth, you still don't get it, do you? Didn't I mention that my uncle is the principal of Sunshine Kindergarten? Or did you forget that? Yeah, what about it? Excuse me? You're talking about the kindergarten, right? What's that got to do with me? My daughter starts elementary school next semester, so I really don't care who rounds that kindergarten. But my eldest son will be going to elementary school next semester, too! You forgot that I know all the moms around here. In fact, I'm sort of their de facto leader. It would be super easy for me to make life hell for you around here. I could have you run out of town. I believe you'll be getting this termination letter from the kindergarten reading that bus stop. Excuse me? What did you just say? I said the bus stop is no more. The principal of Sunshine Kindergarten, your uncle, confessed that the application form was a forgery. Huh? No way! I plan to sue you and the other mothers. You for forgery and building that bus stop illegally, and the moms who went along with you and wreaked havoc on our property. You will all end up paying for damages after our lawyers get through with you. 
Wait a second. Beth, are you serious? What the hell are you talking about? You sound like you're making a victory lap or something. You think you can win against me? Okay, have it your way. When I say the following, you'll probably relent. I'm sure of it. What are you talking about? I have a good friend, someone I've known since childhood. She advised me regarding this issue. Her name is Claire Stanton. Of Stanton Industries? I'm sure you've heard of them. That new fence? That was built by the people from Stanton. As a matter of fact, Mr. Stanton took it upon himself to make sure the work was done right. Wait, excuse me? Did you say Stanton Industries? Mr. Stanton himself? Stanton Industries is the largest employer around this region. Mr. Stanton has considerable influence around here. I heard he may even run for governor soon. Are you serious? Is this some kind of joke? Are you a childhood friend of Mr. Stanton's daughter, Claire Stanton? Yeah, that's right. And it happens that Mr. Stanton is close with your uncle. Longtime golf buddies, I hear. You're gonna have to work out what to do about forging that application. Like I said, it's a crime, so I would be worried if I were you. Mr. Stanton was furious that his golf buddy would use his position to influence others. But even he was more enraged that a relative would take advantage of the principal's position to force others into submission. Ugh. What happens to my uncle? I hear he'll be forced to retire by the end of the year. No way! This is not happening! Why is this happening to me? My son has to start elementary school in another district, miles away! And my younger son has to transfer to a kindergarten over in the low-income neighborhood! None of this makes sense to me! Well, I heard you took advantage of your position and your connections and forced everyone to do as you demand. You apparently had to be taught a lesson. How was I supposed to know that you were related to the Stanton family? If I had known, I would never have acted this way. I built this position up for years. I was king of the hill, the boss mom. Well, you could have just been a normal mom and none of this would have happened. It's too late for that. I wish I had never heard of you. I later heard that when Sandra first moved to her new home, she saw her front yard and was totally taken aback. Apparently, she was so consumed with envy that she ended up concocting this bus stop scheme. When her husband heard of her antics, I heard he reprimanded her relentlessly. Oh yeah, and the other mothers who went along with her like good little sheep. In order to pay for damages, some of them even started working part-time for Stanton Industries. As for Sandra, she was forced to live with her mother-in-law and work to pay off her debts. I see her on occasion heading to work in the morning. She's always been a housewife and never really worked in her life. So this new life is going to be pretty hard for her. What goes around comes around. So true.